What's up my friends? In this video, I'm checking out this, the Moment Day Chaser camera backpack. In a veritable sea of camera backpacks, I'm wondering if the Day Chaser might be subjectively the best? You can help me decide, but of course, I'll also be checking out the features, the build quality, I wanna see what you can fit inside it, and then obviously, you know, I'm gonna look at a user experience of this and, you know, end on some balanced pros and cons. If you're new around here, I'm Harv, and I have lots of videos about videography and audio gear, review reviews and tutorials on my channel. So consider subscribing if you haven't already. I always get straight to the good stuff in these reviews. And as ever, I've timestamped everything in this video so you can just skip to the bit you like. Also, these videos are not brought to you by any one company in particular. Uh, it's not sponsored content at all, except for maybe you know, brought to you by my Patreon backers. The idea with my Patreon is it's totally non-profit. Any funds that go into Patreon get spent on, you know, gear that I will then do a, a kind of unbiased review and then give the gear to my backers. So if that appeals, if you like these videos, definitely check it out. It's all linked below. Anyway, let's get on with it. What is the Day Chaser? Well, the Moment Day Chaser was designed in collaboration with awesome photographer Emmett Sparling, who is known for kind of uh, going to shoot photos at exotic locations and traveling with lots of gear hence the collaboration. Just makes so much sense. It can hold 35 litres total capacity and the camera compartment is modular, of course, and has a capacity of 16 litres. The top compartment is for non-essential items like food, first aid, clothes, money, passport, and that kind of thing that you don't really need. And that compartment holds 14 litres. Where did the additional five litres go, I hear you ask? Well, you know, there's so many other little pockets and I'll show you all of that in a bit. For a long while now, my go-to camera bags for videography have been the Tenber Cinelux 21, which I reviewed previously. And by the way, I definitely recommend watching that video. It's, uh, it's a great bag. However, not the best if you're kind of doing lots of traveling around and walking because it's quite big and it isn't really a camera gear plus traveling slash life items combination bag. This leaves me with two think tank bags, the Retrospective 30 sling style bag, which is not great for distributing weight on your shoulders, and the airport commuter, which is handy, but it does protrude quite a bit out the back. So I find that when I'm wearing it, I often bump into things and people. And uh, also, it's also kind of just designed again for camera gear only. The question is, can the Day Chaser sit in that sweet spot of storing enough camera gear and traveling gear whilst still being comfortable to wear? Allowing easy access to your gear whilst keeping it secure and finally looking good doing all those things whilst not breaking the bank? Well, let's see. Let's take a little tour of the Day Chaser now. And here it is, and it's a handsome bag, I think. Firstly, we have this top front pocket and I tend to use this for anything that I need to get access to really quickly, like, you know, my phone, keys, that kind of thing. And then we have the main compartment. And as you can see, you get a waterproof cover for it, which is really nice. It's pretty waterproof anyway, so I've not used this, but it's nice to have. And then we have this zip and this extends the capacity of that front compartment and I just leave it open because I like the extra space and then we have another pocket just at the back and for me this is where I'd want to store things that you want to keep a little bit more secure like passports and money that kind of thing turning it around you can see this is kind of the main drawer of this type of bag and it's the side access you have to grab your camera whenever you need it super handy and does feel quite secure as well also on the side we have this side pocket and this is for storing your laptop amongst other things. And yes, it does store a 16 inch MacBook Pro. Taking a look at the front and you can see we've got these two clips here and their reason for being is twofold. Firstly, it's to keep the camera compartment more secure. You can also use this to attach a travel tripod and that's really handy. We've got a front pocket, you know, use it for whatever you like. And with these clips open, we can then access the main gear compartment. And as you can see, and as I mentioned, it's all modular and you can customize this however you like. And yet again, there's another zip pocket inside for storing whatever you want, SD cards, batteries, whatever you want. We've got a side pocket for your water bottle, really handy, side handles. And this zip here gives us even more space. What I did was I put the waterproof cover in that pocket just in case I needed it. And then taking a look at the back and you can see it's got a nice breathable material that's cushioned and comfortable. We've got solid straps 
with really sturdy clips all around. This thing's great on the comfort side of things. Next onto build quality, and Noment say that it's made from DWA impregnated 500D Codera? Yeah, I didn't know what that meant either, but just to break that down, 500D means 500 denier, which is basically the, the thickness of the material. The Codra is a kind of um, branded version of a woven nylon, so it's super strong. And DWA impregnated means it's been treated to make it more durable and weather resistant. At the time of filming, it comes in two colours. This quite nice classy blue, which is my preference, and it comes in a, a more sort of low-key stealthy black. In terms of weight, it weighs, before you load anything into it, 2.3 kilos, which is not crazy, but also not insignificant. However, this is noticeably lighter than my Tenba Cinelux 21, and that's a tick in my box, particularly because the weight is spread across your shoulders with this one. The zips are all pretty solid and nice to use. I also like the rigidity of the dividers in the gear compartment. And this is reassuring. I'm convinced that it will offer some protection to your gear, which is always good. As for the longevity of the bag, I mean, only time will tell, of course, but I, at the moment I've got no kind of warning signs at all uh, as to, you know, its longevity. Next onto the user experience, and I've been using the Day Chaser for some time now, and I have some opinions. Firstly, the top compartment, and you can see that there's a zip that lets you expand the capacity of this top compartment, and I immediately undid this and it's made a big difference. I am never gonna change this back as I appreciate all of the extra space. So no complaints there. I found I had enough space for a day's worth of food, uh, clothes, you know, extra layers and, and any other gear that I needed. The gear compartment, however, I, I didn't have so much luck with, but that's, I suspect, more down to my gear setup than the compartment itself. But, you know, let me show you what I mean now. So here we are, I've got some gear and the bag, and wait, what? The hair? Guys, you fixate on the strangest thing, let it go. I had it cut, all right? So on this trip, I took uh, this camera, my a7S III, this lens, my uh, Sigma 135 F2 Beast. I took a microphone and an ND filter, which is the uh, HMY um, Revo Ring which is, you know, pretty big. Uh, it just kind of clips on the front. Um, so that's that. And then I took my A7 IV, uh, which I'm shooting on, and the 20 millimeter Sony F1.8, which again, shooting on. And let me show you the compartment here. So you can see this. So this is kind of how it comes set up. And um, first things first, I, I don't know why I left the cage on. I think I, th I just thought, oh, you know, I'm, I'm walking around. Um, extra protection is always welcome. I like the handle, you know, that kind of thing. I shouldn't have bothered. Um, the cages are not are not well suited for, for this. So immediately I had the problem of, well, the cage kind of makes it a bit awkward to, to pull in and, and you know, to, to push in and pull out. Anyway, um, and then the next thing was, this lens is pretty pretty big. It's, I would say, wider in uh, diameter than something like a, a 24 to 70, sorry, a 70 to 200 f2.8. It's, it's really quite chunky. So once this is done up, actually kind of squidging it in between these bits is a little bit tricky. And obviously, you know, you've got a rubbery uh, focus ring as well, which kind of makes it trickier. Um, so I had to shift this bit uh, at an angle to fit the to fit that bit in, and it even then it only just squeezes in, and it you know obviously bulges out this way. Um, it also means that you know attaching things like mics um, that wouldn't have been possible to have that on there. It, it's just there's just no there's just no room. You couldn't. Um, I don't think that would work. Pulling it in and out, it would just fall off, and um, it wouldn't be good. The other big thing for us video guys, obviously, is ND filters, and this, you know, has a very wide uh, diameter there, so um, you're just not going to be able to have this attached to, to almost any lens and whip it out and just shoot. It's just not, it's just not going to happen without rearranging this whole section. The nice thing about this is it's all modular, though, so you can just whip this out and... 
then it kind of will fit in and you know you can take it out a little easier it still be, would be a much easier without the cage um, so this is really what I should have done from the very beginning is just you know rearrange this section it doesn't it still doesn't solve the problem of mics on top but you know that's the kind of thing that um, as you know I know I mentioned I will mention later in the video uh, just maybe keep the mic in your mic in your pocket and just slot it on if you need it um, and that's it really I you know I use these uh, these pockets for uh, you know lenses and and um, uh, batteries and that kind of thing so this is this is the way to do it um, yeah so I had a mixed albeit good overall experience of using the uh, the gear compartment whilst away and I think really what I should have done is spent more time on uh, customizing the shape of the dividers in the gear section to accommodate my you know larger la larger prime lenses and ND filters and whatnot but as I was using two cameras on this trip I actually found that I was using the top compartment as well just to kind of give me easy access to both cameras and I could just, just switch around so I'd say there are a few things that I would recommend for video guys using this bag. And the first one is um, if you've got a cage attached to your camera, which I did on one of them, uh, just take it off. It's, it's just unnecessary for this setup, I think. I would also say the same thing for uh, any audio gear. You, you know, you might have to just keep that in your pocket. Uh, and the same goes for ND filters. Just keep them in your pocket. Uh, ready to just attach because um, they they will I suspect get in the way if they're if you're trying to get it out of the side pocket as for comfort I've done a lot of walking in this now and overall I found it to be super comfortable even when carrying quite a bit of weight uh, and even one time I had it full fully loaded and daughter on my uh, on my shoulders and it was fine the way that I, I kind of made the most of that was I made sure that obviously the clips uh, on my chest and around my waist were always done up and that helps to kind of spread the load of weight. Next I'm looking at value for money and alternatives and I'll start with value and it's kind of tricky because this isn't a budget bag. In fact it's kind of in the ballpark price range of the market leaders but at the same time it does offer quite a bit for your money so I think to really properly evaluate the value we kind of need to look at the the competition and um, and compare. First up we have the Tenber Cinelux 21. It's not really comparable because it's stylistically too different but I'm comparing it because I have one. The Cinelux 21 is £200 and they also do a roller and backpack versions but I'd argue they're trying to do different things. There's no real space for kind of life and travel items with the Cinelux range whereas you know the Day Chaser they have catered for that side of things. And then there's peak design of course and I may get some hate for this but I never quite kind of got the whole peak design thing. Style is subjective and I, I never really kind of gelled that much with the, the kind of the style of them. Price wise they're very similar but the Day Chaser does have a larger capacity overall than the very biggest of the peak design bags. So maybe you know I suspect this is the kind of thing where you own a peak design bag and then you fall in love with it but do let me know your experiences with that side of things. Next onto the pros and cons, and I'll start with the pros because I'm a glass half full kind of guy. Starting with the pros, and it's really well made. The build quality I find kind of hard to fault. You know, it's a bag made from good materials. I think generally the design is really good. It's super functional. There's so many pockets. The gear compartment's really rugged. It's subjective, of course, but I think this is a really stylish bag. I love the colors they've used. I like all the little details. Yeah, suits me. I love the fact that this doesn't look like a camera bag and that's one real negative about the Peak Design bags is that they're very recognizable and of course that can always be a security risk. It's comfortable. I've tried and tested it with lots of weight and no back pain. And then onto the cons and firstly the price and I think it's maybe a little bit high for something that's not the market leader but then again I don't believe it should be a given that you automatically pay more for the market leader. Will people just buy the Peak Design because it's better known? Maybe. 
but it's a shame if they do. Subjectively, I would say not the best for videographers. The way I set it up definitely wasn't quite right. It's just the question of capacity. I think I'm really just spoiled by the Tenba Cinelux range and you kind of do need to tweak your setup to work with the bag. But you know, I figure if you're using this bag, you're walking a lot, you're conscious about weight anyway, you're probably gonna shed some of the unnecessary gear and just stick with the basics anyway. Finally, to my opinion, and it's a great bag that's a really welcome addition to my collection. Answer me this, why is it when, you know, you get into cameras, whether you're into photography or video or whatever, you, you get into cameras and then all of a sudden you be become obsessed with acquiring bags and finding the, the perfect bag? What's that all about? Well, one thing I know is I'm certain there is no perfect bag. So that means obviously you just have to go and get a bag for all occasions. And, uh, and with that in mind, I think the Day Chaser is perfectly named. So buy this if the Peak Design bag is on your shopping list and you're not sort of wedded to the brand leader or, you know, Manfrotto or Think Tank for that matter. I really think this is uh, worth considering if that's the style that you're going for. Don't buy this if you have too many bags already. And really the first step with that is just to, you know, just to admit that you have a problem and only then can you start to deal with it. Anyway, that's it for now. I just hope you found this interesting and helpful. Do you agree? What did I miss? Please tell me what's the best camera bag you've ever used. I really wanna know and I want to check out more. So definitely let me know and I'll see you down in the comments section. I've now made over 300 of these videos. Can you believe it? <laughs> of which the algorithm has recommended this video for you and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.